Hi everyone, happy Thursday. We're back today with a math book for you. So this book is called Le Little Leonardo's Fascinating World of Math. So there's a series, a few little books um, under the Little Leonardo's category, and this one explains all about math. So it has something for everyone. If you're in kindergarten or first grade, if you're in fifth or sixth grade, it covers a wide variety of math. So there might be some of it you already know, or there might be some of it you definitely haven't learned yet. But either way, hang in there and you'll learn all about the different types of math and how we use math out in the world. Okay. So this book is written by Bob Cooper. It is illustrated by Greg Paprocki and it's read with permission from Gibbs Smith Publishing. So thank you for that permission. Mathematics provides the basic building blocks for, for science, engineering, technology, and some of the arts. Understanding math begins with our number system. We use a decimal system, which means it includes 10 different numerals, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. The simplest use of numbers is to count how much there is of something. The numeral 0 means there's nothing. The other numerals from 1 to 9 represent increasingly larger amounts. So you can kind of see in the picture we have 0 people, 1 person, 2 people, three people, four people, five people, and so on. By combining these, we can make numbers larger than nine, starting with 10, 11, and 12, and much larger numbers like 50, 100, 762, 91,854, or, oh geez, 3,659,012,877. big number. Numbers are also used to measure size or amount. We use rulers and tape measures to measure length. Scales measure weight. Watches and clocks measure time. Thermometers are used to measure temperature. A football field includes measurements right on the field. There are hash marks one yard apart and the number of yards from the 50 yard line to each goal line is marked every 10 yards. Understanding numbers and what they are used for helps us understand our world. Arithmetic is one thing we do with numbers every day. The basic operations of arithmetic are addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Helping with grocery shopping, you can use addition to add the prices of items to make sure you have enough money for everything. I do that a lot. Here's another example. You helped plan the family road trip to the Grand Canyon. The map shows that it's 450 miles away. After driving more than five hours, you use subtraction to find out that you still have to go 450 miles minus the 375 miles, show, miles shown on the car's odometer that you've already traveled, which equals 75 miles. If a recipe serves a certain number of people, but you're cooking for a different number, you can use multiplication and division to figure out the proper amount of ingredients. You're helping make some omelets. The recipe says to use three eggs for one omelet and you're making four omelets. You multiply three eggs times four omelets to find out that you'll need 12 eggs. You chop up eight tablespoons of fresh parsley. Divide eight tablespoons by four omelets to find that you can sprinkle two tablespoons on each omelet. I find that I, too, use math a lot when I'm cooking. We use fractions to count part of something, an amount that's more than nothing, zero, but less than one whole thing, or one. If you're really hungry and eat three of the eight pieces of pizza, the fraction three-eighths shows how much pizza you ate. Numbers mentioned so far have been zero and numbers more than zero. Numbers that are more than zero are called positive numbers. Positive numbers are like riding an elevator from the ground floor of a building to the upper floors. As you go up, the floor numbers increase, one, two, three, and so on. If the building also has underground levels, you can ride the elevator down past the ground floor. Think of these numbers as negative numbers, less than zero. We write these as negative one, negative two, and say we can say that, or we can say minus one and minus two.
A cool way to think about all the numbers we've seen so far is to look at them on a number line. If we flip the building on its side, we can think of the ground level as the number zero. The main floors of the building are positive numbers and go to the right of zero. The underground levels are negative numbers and go to the left of zero. We can even put our 3 eighths fraction on the number line. It goes between zero and one, since we know it's more than zero and less than one. Okay, so here's where zero is and there's 3 eighths. It's a little bit more than zero, but it's not quite to one yet. A number line is a way to look at a group of numbers as a picture. It's a basic graph. Graphs can use lines, shapes, and even colors to make numbers easier to understand. Graphs are good for showing how things change over time. Like the weather, you could use a thermometer to measure and write down the temperature every hour during the day. Okay, so here's a chart of what that, here's a picture of what that chart might look like. Hmm. A list of numbers doesn't tell as good of a story as a graph. We can create a simple graph by putting two different number lines together. One that shows the time of day going from left to right, and another that shows the temperature going up and down. By drawing a dot for each temperature on our list and connecting them all, our graph looks a little like a mountain with its peak at 5 p.m. when the temperature is the hottest. Okay, so this line graph shows what the chart also shows. Geometry is about the size and shapes of objects, like lines, triangles, and circles. We deal with geometry problems all the time. For example, is that shelf long enough to fit all my books? Hmm. Which cup lid, small, medium, or large, will fit on my cup? At what angle do I need to kick the soccer ball to get it in the corner of the goal? Now here's the algebra page. So some of you who are in upper elementary school or even middle school definitely want to check this out. It normally takes you 20 minutes to walk one mile to school each day. If you walked around your neighborhood for 60 minutes at your normal speed, how far did you walk? Hmm. If you want to pause and try to figure out this one, go for it. Using algebra, we can write the question as an equation using the numbers we know and a variable x for the number we don't know. Equations always include an equal sign, meaning that what's on the left of the equal, side, equal sign is the same as what's on the right. Here's our question as an equation. 20 minutes over one mile is the same as 60 minutes over X miles. We can solve this equation to find out what, the, what value of X will make the two sides equal. X miles equals 60 minutes times one mile over 20 minutes. Hmm. Now we can use arithmetic on the right side of the equation. First, 60 times one is 60. Then 60 divided by 20 equals three. You walked three miles. Numbers and math are part of almost everything we do. They help us describe and understand the world around us. So have fun with math. And on the other pages in the book, there is a glossary. So I'm not going to read out every definition, but I will leave this here. If you would like to pause and look through the words, you may. And the last thing that I really enjoy, they have a spotlight on some important mathematicians. Okay, so again, I'm not gonna read every word, but you can feel free to explore these and pause the page if you want. There are six famous mathematicians that are described here. And again, that was little Leonardo's fascinating world of math. I know I love math and I can find it all around us. So I hope that you can too, especially if you're home from school and wondering, well, how am I gonna do anything about math? Math is all around us if you just know where to look. So I'm so glad I got to check in with you and read today. I know if you're in Baltimore County or in Maryland, like me, the news came out that we won't be seeing each other for at least four more weeks. So I'm really glad that we can still connect via technology. So I'm thinking about you all. Hope you're staying safe. I can't wait to see you. I miss you. I wish you well.